Do you feel the pressure? G'day. It's been a pretty funny couple of weeks online, huh? I'll have a bit of a talk later about that while I'm driving up the mountain. But first, down to business. Here I am at sea level, where we have one whole atmosphere worth of pressure pushing down on us. I certainly don't feel air pressure, but luckily we have precision instruments like barometers that do feel air pressure. Now I can't go 10 miles up, but maybe doing some observations down here, we might be able to guess what's going on up there. As you can see, the air pressure here at sea level is fairly high, over 1,010 hectopascals, and I'm not moving up or down, so the barometer is fairly stable. I never really intended to do a video about air pressure, but I absolutely love amateur science, so I couldn't resist. Our glorious Wolfpack leader, Wolfie6020, already did a fantastic video demonstrating how air of different pressure is capable of coexisting together without a barrier. The full video is in the description. I'm sure most of you are already subbed to Wolfie, but if you're not, do it now. Also, you better be subbed to Red's Rhetoric too. He beats me up when I don't mention his name. <laughs> and this is to show you my location here at sea level. Sorry about the glare and the reflection, but I thought this was an effective way to show you where I am. East coast of Australia, a little north of Sydney, uh, at the marina in Nelson Bay. It really is an amazing part of the world, a great place for making observations of the Earth. Now, let's hop in my Google Earth teleportation machine and go for a ride. I was recently in Canberra for a few days, Australia's capital city, which has an average altitude of about 600 metres, which is fairly high by Australian standards. Anyway, I had a bit of spare time and I wanted to do some footage, but the weather was terrible, so sunset time lapses were out of the question. Uh, I'd always thought about what if someone could do a demonstration like Woofy, but instead of in an elevator, what if I could drive up and down a mountain while filming both the drive and the barometer app. This is Mount Ainsley in Canberra and it's uh, perfect for a air pressure demonstration. Canberra has a few lookouts around the city. This mountain, Mount Ainsley, is perfect for what I wanted to do. The base of the mountain is about 610 meters above sea level and the peak is about 845 meters with a road going right up the side. Perfect. And here we are at the base of the mountain. The pressure apps are now reading a much lower pressure because of our altitude is much higher, of course. First though, here's a wider view of the mountain where we're at. And the road goes up the right hand side, which is about an 800 foot difference between the base and the peak. All right, here we go. Can different air pressures coexist without a container? We're sitting at about 610 meters and 934 hectopascals. I sped this footage up a little. The drive starts off fairly level just here, but watch the pressure drop as we start driving up the mountain. And the pressure is falling. So it's been a pretty big couple of weeks in the flat earth, globe earth, world, whatever you want to call it. Wolfie is owed about $100,000 now by he who shall not be named. Actually, I think Mr. FO0 owes about $300,000 now. Also, Fight the Flat Earth completely destroyed him, and Conspiracy Cats took FO0 downtown. Red's rhetoric has been debating like a demon. I'd hate to be a Flat Earther debating Red's. The man seriously knows his stuff. We also saw Miles Davies do an incredible observation which has the flat ones in a spin. Especially all the uh, Flat Earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. And now Logan Paul reckons he's a flat earther, that's awesome. Check out Soundly's latest video on that, it's hilarious. Okay, we're coming up to the top of the mountain now, which was in the clouds, that's why the exposure is maxed out like that. The peak elevation is 846 meters above sea level, which we'll see in a second. The pressure is now down to about 910, so that's a difference of about 24 hectopascals. It would seem that different air pressures can go exist without a barrier. But to me, the main point here is, at sea level, we had about 1,010 hectopascals. We're now almost 900 meters or 3,000 feet up and down to 910 hectopascals of air pressure. So from this, I can see that if we kept going higher, the air pressure would keep dropping until it was virtually zero. 
I'm guessing around 10 kilometers, there's not going to be much air pressure at all. I'll talk more about that at the end of the vid. Here's a little pan I did from the top of the mountains, or clouds. It was clearer the day before while I was up there, e Exhibit A. Also on the mountain and in the whole area of Canberra are these Silurian rocks from the Paleozoic era, which are about 430 million years old, but that's another video. Now to go back down the mountain, I thought I'd use the other pressure app for this just to show that both pressure apps are using the iPad's barometer. And this time the pressure will go up as we go down. The app does show the altitude in this one, but I think it's a little bit difficult to see. The needle there at the bottom shows the we're just starting to go below the 850 meters. And oh man, there was a lot of G-forces on this corner. <laughs> now I know I'll get the usual BS from the flat ones. It's just a nap and naps don't prove anything. You don't even know how it works. And you know, I don't. I don't know how the barometer in the iPad actually works. What I do know though, is the iPad clearly knows the altitude I'm at. It also knows whether I'm going up or going down. How does it know that? If it was just some kind of information from the internet like Google Earth, there's no way it'd be working this smoothly. There's no glitching at all. The app is definitely using one of the iPad sensors. And here we are, back down to 934 hectopascals. On the trip home, there's an area just before Sydney where the elevation goes from about 600 metres down to about 40 metres above sea level. I wanted to do a similar setup as the mountain, but I couldn't cover the speedometer on the car with the iPad. So I just filmed the road and at the same time screen recorded the iPad while running the pressure wrap. And down we go. Oh yeah, I matched it as best I could. It's about 30-40 minutes of drive time, sped up of course. It's hard to tell from this footage, but most of this is all downhill. Look at that pressure rise. I did want to do one last bit of footage all the way back to sea level, but my shield budget read out for this video, and I think the observation is pretty clear. So, my conclusion is, I went from sea level with 1010 hectopascals of air pressure, up to 850 meters or about 2,800 feet with only about 910 hectopascals of pressure up there. So with some basic maths, I can assume that if I kept going up at about 10 kilometers, there would be a significant drop in air pressure to virtually no air pressure at all, which matches the established science. Big surprise. And that also gives the atmosphere plenty of room to adjust to the vacuum of space. This would also mean, if we assumed the Earth was flat and had a giant dome over it, and that dome was about 3,000 miles high, the atmosphere would be a thin strip along the bottom. That means the flat Earth dome is a giant vacuum chamber. So the flat Earth model is a great example of air pressure next to a vacuum. Isn't science fun? This is why I love amateur science. And my parting thought is, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything.